we're going to talk about how to distinguish uh, different molecules, whether they're enantiomers, diastereomers, or they're the same compound, essentially. So taking a look at this first pair of molecule, are these enantiomers, diastereomers, or are they, are, are, are they the same molecule? Well, we're given two chair confirmation, right? So let's see if you could call one carbon and maybe you could use this at, this as a practice so kind of pause the video before we uh before we kind of get to the answer uh so on carbon one here or maybe we'll call this from here on carbon one here we have a chlorine that's going down all right so carbon one two three four five on carbon five we have a bromine that's going um going up all right so maybe we could draw the real life thing of this molecule here right so really we have a cyclohexane and on carbon one the chlorine is going down which kind of usually means that we have a dash so on carbon one two three four five the bromine is actually going up which means that the bromine kind of have this kind of cis thing to it right now how about this this looks like a different chair confirmation but let's see on carbon one now we have the chlorine going down so this will now be carbon one so again on carbon one we have the chlorine still going down carbon one two three four five we have the bromine it's going up on carbon five the bromine is going up all right and as you could see these are the same molecules literally the same thing these are just the chair confirmations flip. So these are identical. Let's look at the second pair molecule here. All right. So how many chiral centers we see? We see three different chiral centers. Now, look closely. The, the OH group changes, right? The ID group stays the same. The NH group stays the same, right? So there's only one thing that changes in the molecule. And... In this case, we'll classify these diastereomers. And the reason being is that a diastereomer, how it differs from an antiomers is that it has to have at least two chiral centers with one staying the same. So notice that our NH or amine group stays the same, right? They both have wedges and our, and our uh, iodine group stays the same. They both have dashes. However, our you know, OH group changes. Well, we have two chiral centers that pretty much stays the same, but one change. And so that is what we'll classify as a diastereomer. How about this one? What would be the classification of this molecule? Well, again, we notice that there are two chiral centers in the molecule, but notice how your chiral centers changes, right? So over here, we have a CH3 that went to from a wedge to a dash. We have a chlorine that went, went from a dash to a wedge. Anytime you have all your chiral centers changing in such fashion, that will always give you an enantiomer. All right, let's look at this one. We have this cyclo, you know, methyl chlor cyclohexane right here, right? And then we have this chair confirmation of the molecule. Well, let's see. We could call this carbon one. And as you can see on carbon one here, we have the CH3 that is basically going up or kind of coming out at us. And this is consistent with what is here, right? We have a CH3 that's coming up or kind of coming out of us, right? On carbon one, two, three, four, right? So on carbon four, so one, two, three, four, we have the, we have the chlorine group that is actually going down, right? Here, the chlorine group is coming out at us, right? So the chlorine group is coming out at us. Here is going down. So this is basically, this now have, so the molecule looks something like this, right? The CH3 group stays the same because it's coming out of us, right? But in carbon four, now the chlorine is going away, which means that it has a kind of dash, right? So looking at these two molecules here, we can see that one chiral center stays the same but the other chiral center switches, right? This now one chiral center stays the same, but the chlorine switches, right? And this again is what we classify as diastereomers. How about this one? Well, looking at this molecule, notice that both our chiral center changes. So the chlorine 
goes from a dash to a wedge and the bromine goes from a wedge to a dash right and this is simply enantiomers all your chiral centers change and that's what we classify as enantiomers all right how about this one Right. How about this one? How about this one? Right. We have this molecule, this pair molecule here. All right. So again, here we have a chlorine going away and the bromine having a wedge. But here, look, the molecule is flipped and now the chlorine is going away. The chlorine is coming out at you, the bromine is going away. The reason why I put these two together, because I want to illustrate something here. These, and take your best guess, and you could pause this video, but these are actually identical. These are the same molecule. And what you find out is that if you were about to take this molecule and flip it over, you would see that your chlorine that was going away from you will be coming out at you, and your bromine that was going away from you, that was coming out at you, will be going away from you, which is exactly what you see right here. And it's just the same molecule flip. Now, you could draw enantiomers two different ways, right? You could draw enantiomers two different ways, and this is one this is what I wanted to illustrate. This, these two are enantiomers. Notice that the substituents are on the same side, but the chiral center changes. That's one way of drawing an enantiomer. Another way of drawing an enantiomer of this compound, and I'm gonna squeeze it in here, is something that looks like this. So this, these are two enantiomers of this compound here. Notice the difference between this and this, right? Here, the molecule flips, but the chiral center never changes. The chiral centers are the same. And what you'll find out that these two are non-superimposable on each other, right? They're non-superimposable on each other. On this end, when you flip the molecule, the chiral centers change, right? And that is just just saying that you all you're doing is just flipping the molecule and, and and that will give you the same identical molecule flipping the molecule but you got to keep your chiral centers the chain that's the same if you want to get enantiomers flipping the molecule and changing your uh, your chiral centers that will give you that is basically the same molecule and that is a very important point to illustrate